and welcome to The Extra Mile. I'm Linda Boudreau. Our guests today are Eddie Thibodeau, who is the owner of the Eunice Black Belt Academy, and Hannah Cajun Karate Kid Richard, who has won numerous awards uh, with her karate skills. And so we're going to meet both of them today and find out about kind of the importance of karate for young people, huh? Is that kind of where we're going with this, guys? Yes, yeah, sure because, is. Uh, because, Hannah, you've done some amazing things in your seven or so years as a karate student. Am I right about that? Yes, ma'am. Do you like it? Absolutely. So we're going to start with you. How did you get involved in karate to begin with? Whenever my mom had a job in Crowley, her boss and his daughter were friends, me and her, and we were supposed to join karate together, and then she didn't show up, but then <laughs> he started talking about me and started talking to me and asked me all kind of questions and just made me feel at home, so I just wanted to join. So you were seven years old, give or take? Give a little. Mm. Give a little, okay. And you stuck with it? Absolutely. Why? Because they just made me feel like it was family and second home, and I really enjoyed it. Okay. And to be perfectly frank, you're very good at it, and it feels good to do what we're good at. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of doing that. Now, Eddie, you've gotten, I just did that, you've gotten involved with, I mean, you teach these kids, right? I mean, yes. And Hannah is one of your students, but certainly not your only student. All right, we have uh, about 110 students right now, aging from age three to I think the oldest one is right now is about 45, 46 years old. Oh, so karate is for people of all ages. Karate is a great way to start at three years old to teach them yes ma'am, no uh, sir. Uh, we teach uh, getting ready for school, you know, for pre-k. Mm -hmm. We teach the pledge, uh, you know, to respect your, uh, we of course teach stranger danger and uh, be respectful to of course your parents and the teachers and stuff. So there's more to karate than just kicking and ducking and slam banging. Kicking and forms and weapons is so little to do with karate. Most people think that all you do is fight and do forms and kick, and it's yeah. karate is a way of life. It's a um, get in the. I always say this: I want to create leaders and not followers. Okay. You know, I want student council presidents. I want leaders in church and in the community, and that's that's what it's about: discipline. It's about respecting our elders. So I see that so much right now that that some of the kids have lost their way. You know, they need to be, and it's not taking the place of their parents, but it's kind of instilling the same thing that they are talking about and it's just helping out. You know, like we talked earlier about the tribe raising your mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. But to get back into respecting people and, and, and loving on people. And, and do you think that karate has helped you to be a more respectful and loving human being? Most definitely. And, you know, so often we think that karate is about fighting, but it isn't that, is it? No. What do you think it's taught you most of all? Um, respect. Really? Discipline. And how to care for others and not be so selfish. And you work as a team, not for yourself. And as a team member, your team has been very successful, right? Yes, most, so, most definitely. So tell me about, because you've, you've won lots of awards. Tell me, and we have examples here. Tell me about some of what you've won. Um... This one right here is my Louisiana number one ranked in the whole state. Wait, wait, and you're number one in the whole state? Yes, ma'am. So that's why you're our Cajun Karate Kid, because you're like number one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then this one, my team won in fighting. It's, we made up a little girls team, girl fighting team, and our team won that. Oh, so this is a team this. belt here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Each one of us got it for fighting. Okay. But it's because you work together as a team, yes. you got it. So you can win when it's not just you, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, this, I got in one of my first place, the sword. The sword? And that was first place for what? Um, I have numerous, so I'm not quite sure <laughs> what that one's for. <laughs> in, in the tournaments, they give um, anywhere from plaques to uh, weapons, nunchucks. So uh, we travel a lot. And the, the promoters try to make it interesting for the kids, not just trophies all the mm -hmm. time, but uh, like I said, jackets, plaques, um, you know, something fun and exciting for the kids to bring home and, and uh, show off to their I think their that students. sword is pretty big and pretty exciting. That's no small thing. And the good thing about it, um, the tournaments are like divided up into ages and, and belts. So a five-year-old and under, if they place first, they'll get the same award as an 18-year-old black belt. 
So they don't lessen it saying, well, you're just, you're sick, so we're just going to give you a, a medal while the other kids are getting, uh, or the other students are, are getting something like a, a ring or a belt or something. So you know what that does? So it goes back to respect, doesn't it? And, yes, it and does. teaching and demonstrating respect early on. If I can add, the, uh, there's different leagues that we compete in. Uh, there's a sport karate league and, and the National Black Belt League. The, the, the skill, what she was talking about, was uh, during tournaments, the Sport Karate International League, which is international, they keep points. And whoever makes the most points in all of the tournaments that year, they give an overall top award. And in the Sport Karate League that we compete in is uh, for, just for Louisiana tournaments because we travel nationwide from New York to uh, California. Just the only Louisiana tournaments were, were added up, and she won the overall top underbelt, which is red and below to, to, to white belt. Congratulations. Thank you. That's quite an honor. I want to see you do something, just because you can. But and maybe you could set it up for us. I mean, what do you? Well, in, in tournaments, um, we, we compete in open tournaments, which is, uh, there's a difference of open and closed. A closed tournament only would have a certain style come, and you can only do that in that style. An it. open tournament says, bring me your Japanese, your Korean, your Kung Fu, your Wushu, and say, we'll put it all together, and we'll see who the, the best of the best are. Mm -hmm. You're not degrading any styles, but it just says, it's just different. It's different. And you'll see in, in forms, in fact, do a... Uh, do a Japanese form. Do a unsu. Okay, so, so now we're going to get a demonstration, and this is going to be, what is she going to be doing? She's going to do a Japanese form. It's a black belt form called unsu. Okay. While she's doing it, this is a traditional form. It dates back, of course, to Japanese and, and Korean styles. Um, she is not allowed to wear weapons, to have weapons. She's not allowed to have music. Now, she, of course, would be wearing a, a traditional white uniform. Um, they grade here on technique. Uh, if she's not making any noise right now, she would be uh, key opping. Um, key opping is? is uh, it comes from the, from, the, from the stomach. Thank you, ma'am. That was and beautiful. It, it executes, Thank you. it shows you power, and, uh, and it, it shows that, um, it, like I said, we, we're looking at aggression and technique and snapness of the form and stuff. Okay, so she and is, control. It's a very traditional form there's no backflips splits anything like that so it, it dates back to like I said um, back in when they were created and uh, that's a special event that um, and she's won numerous first place and grand champions in that division and does it take a lot of concentration and staying focused to to do that or are you just so comfortable with it now that you can just sort of do it well kind of both okay like Regular tournaments, I'll be a little more comfortable, but once you get up with the big dogs, it's kind of like, well, got to focus big time. And when you focus big time, you're able to get into that zone and, and, and do that. Yes, it's just like you run into the motions and you don't even think like, oh, look, there's my friend. No, you're thinking strictly on that. Does it make you nervous? So eh, yes. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not all the time. Because you've practiced and you've trained and you know what you can do, huh? Yeah. And I think everybody else here is doing the same thing, so why be nervous? That's true. That's true. And you've got a good teacher and... And we say it just well. like at school. Just play like you're at school at home and, and do it hard. And we have a saying that go big or go home. Okay. You know, and <laughs> do it as hard as you can. You have one time to impress the judges. And That's we my ring. We don't want ties. We want to go out there and show that... This one should be first in all the judges' minds. And that's really been kind of part of what's driving you and your students. I mean, you're not a tad competitive. You just really want to bring out the best in these, in these kids or it these is, adults. It is amazing to see. Um, when we used to go to, you know, when we go to tournaments, when we just started out, people would actually say, what's a Eunice? Yeah, what is a Eunice? You, you <laughs> have, I mean, you have team, like, Focus and Pinnacle and, and uh What's one of your good teams that you go against? Strike Force. Strike Force out of Georgia or the Schumann Group out of Mexico and Guatemala. And here we are as just little old Eunice. <laughs> and, uh, the Eunice it, Black Belt Academy. <laughs> and again, they say, what's a Eunice? But, you know, and we tell the kids, 
Eunice is just a place on a map. You're, you're no lesser of a person because you're from Lafayette or Louisiana. And we say, we tell the, the kids that if the parents were from Dallas or Guatemala or from Canada or Spain, or we compete a great team from Ireland, um, it's just a place on a map. Don't, don't say just because you're from Ville Plata, Risha, or the Church Point that you're not as good as the, these uh, big city schools. So have you traveled a lot with this? A lot, yes. <laughs> How do you manage definitely. that in school and everything else in your life? Is it a lot? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and just about everything. At school too? Mm, yes, ma'am. So what else do you do at school besides just be a karate kid champion person? Um, cheerleading, softball, track. I'm starting powerlifting. And next year I'm doing volleyball again. I didn't do it this year. Okay, so uh, like you said, you you want leaders out of these young ends, huh? Uh, I guess we. I don't like to share her, <laughs> but uh, it's amazing to see uh, that she excels in in every sport that she puts her heart and mind to. But Hannah, you want to go far in karate, don't you? Yes, ma'am. What would you like to do with it when all is said and done? Um, not saying anything, but I want to open my own school. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Not be <feared> rivals, <laughs> but um, help like he did to me, help other kids how he helped me. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It definitely does. So all this helping stuff, and yet you work with weapons. Huh. Yes, ma'am. What kind of weapons do you like to work with? Nunchucks and commas. Those so, are my two mains. So can you give us a demonstration, a weapons demonstration? Sure can. Do the, uh, the commas. Yeah, okay. Are you going to explain to us what she's doing? Well, I think I might have written one down. The, the commas actually, um, the, the weapons in karate originate back in old in Okinawa days that the comma was actually used to, um, to chop the wheat. Uh, the nunchuck was used actually to beat the, See, um, that's okay. to beat the, uh, the wheat and stuff off the stalks. Um, and in the tournaments they have... I'm finished. They have uh, things that that it's so traditional and then they also have what she was doing she was doing some spins and some throws and stuff um, they like to see the manipulation of the weapon now again there's different divisions that they have a traditional weapon would straight up be just like her, her form earlier very traditional and sharp and uh, and um, we look at stances and stuff again. So it's not just handling the weapon, it's how you stand and it's how right. you oh, hold It's right, oh, it's stances. Yourself. Anybody, we say, they can just twirl a weapon, but you still have to have karate in it. Uh, this division that, that sh she does is, it's allowed music also. So you have to be in tune with the music. But um, if you just hold a traditional weapon and you're in a creative division, you're not gonna win. They wanna see the weapon spin and throw it up and, and, and catch it behind your back and stuff like and that. And you do all that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Working harder on it. So what's your favorite? With the music, you like doing it with the music? You like the creative parts yes. of it? Because yes, very much. Getting in the zone with that, huh? Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like you can just flow with it. So you're almost, you're almost like one with it, huh? Most definitely. So do you get to pick your own music? Yes, ma'am. That's mm -hmm. like my favorite part about it. Really? You pick one that fits you where you don't have to be. If you're like more into hip hop, you don't have to go with some heavy metal stuff that they pick for you or dubstep. You get to pick pretty much you, and it, it the music practically describes you. So, what music do you like to work with? Um, mixture of everything. Um, sometimes hip hop, mostly dubstep and like rock. Okay. Okay. And do you kind of help them with that? Help them to kind of. I I let them pick their own music and. Being a, uh, a judge at the World Championships, we get to see, I get to see what looks good on the person, what, you know, because uh, you just, uh, there are some divisions you can just have background music, but a lot of the divisions we do is uh, choreographed. So we sit back and I mix it. We, we do an entrance music and um, like, like Miss Hannah said, we, we tune it to them. If they don't know the song, that's they not just can't, work. They can't feel the song. Yeah. And you can tell a student that is just doing some forms with a, with a song. So um, they, I let them have the, the end say, but we make sure that uh, it's, it's appropriate. One, it's appropriate for tournaments because you have a family. It's a family environment. 
So we make sure that there are no curse words. And, um, uh, and you are young. We do not want you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we want you to do things that are GP <laughs> in these tournaments. Do you, um, do you travel as a group? Do your parents go? We have a great following. Um, we started out in a, an Astro van. <laughs> we graduated to an, a 15 passenger van and now with uh, some fundraising we actually bought a 30 passenger bus uh, it's kind of like a, a, a touring bus a casino bus where that I can bring the, the kids that come from a low-income home mm -hmm. or the parents don't have a vehicle and it, it's it's so wonderful to see that we'll, we'll have some kids come in from a low-income home and this kid is a superstar you know, that probably wouldn't get the chance to be yeah. without sponsors and fundraisers. We, we actually flew up to uh, Buffalo, New York last year for 2012, and we did garage sales, fundraisers, uh, enchilada sales from the sponsors in our school and the parents, and we were able to bring 24 parents and students, all expense wow. paid, to Buffalo, New York, and give wow. these kids a chance to go to Buffalo and compete with the big names from Spain and Ireland and Canada and, and Mexico and show off their talents of Louisiana. Did you go to that? Yes, ma'am. That's where I won my five world titles. And that's on your jacket, right? Maybe we get a shot of your jacket where it says, what, so you got all those at the same event. So what were those for, Hannah? Um, <laughs> sparring, open hand, creative. Um, traditional weapons, traditional weapons, the major events. So you were having a really good day. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a week-long competition with uh, probably six to 7,000 people there, and it's uh, wow. from all across the, the, the world. So karate, I didn't realize karate was that big, but there was oh, it's, that much going on with there are major leagues like the United States Karate Alliance, uh, NASCA, that you see sometimes on TV. Mm -hmm. um, there are tournament leagues all across the, the, uh, the nation. And lots and lots of competition. You know, there was a time when we used to help get some of our kids into karate because we, we always were told that it helped them to manage their own feelings and their own impulses well because some of our kids have some issues. And so, I think that that's kind of what I see with you. I mean, you, you're poised, you sit here, and you're able to, to do all this kind of stuff, and you don't get ruffled. Oh, you see, really? our, our team is just a, a little bit of our karate. We, we have, like I said, 120 students, but only 15 to 25 on our team. Um, we have, we, of course, all martial arts do this. They accept people that have anger issues. They have, except we accept people that doesn't feel that they belong to anybody. Yeah. And having trouble at their house, maybe it's a divorce oh. or, or maybe it's a single parent. And those are a lot of our extra mile right. kids as you figured out. Yeah. And at school, we check yeah. report cards at our school, like everybody, like other schools, but we also reward them for honor roll. And we, we also help them uh, if uh, they need some work on their school work and stuff. In fact, in our school, um, before you can test for your belt, we have a paper that the parent and the teacher must sign that they've been receiving passing grades and they've been respectful at home. Okay, so there are expectations that go with this. It's really, a, I guess what I'm hearing is it's a privilege to be able to do all of this. Is that, is that a fair it's thing It's a say? privilege and the parents and the teachers have a say-so in, in our school, okay. much like other schools. Okay. Well, you know, we're kind of getting down to the last like five minutes. I do would like, I would love to see you do one more demonstration. I'm going to let the two of you, because I don't know enough to even say what. <laughs> and so we did traditional forms, uh -huh. and we did weapons. Uh, she's going to do an open hand form. In open, you can do everything you want. You can do cartwheels and backflips, and they've got so many names of kicks now that I don't, I don't know. When I started in the 80s, we had forms and fighting. Now they have choreographed, and they have tricks and everything. So Miss Hannah's going to go up and do a couple of, this is an open hand form that, uh, again, we still look for karate. Um, and karate, when you look up for karate, we're talking about with the stance. We so. still look for stances and techniques, but this one is, um, she's going to do a lot of open hands, and she's going to see if we can do some uh, 
There's some acrobats too. Whoa. With my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and that's wow. again with the space that we have. Yeah, Our rings are, are 20 by 20. Yeah, we're very, we're right. very, very limited here. But, uh, and we're the the basic is. form, 45 seconds to a minute, minute and a half. Um, do you get to pick your own moves within a for, within a form like that? You can decide what you want to yes, do. In creative, this is the good thing about creative. Traditional is a traditional recognized form. In creative, open hand, you get to make it. They have to make, make it. it yourself. So they you can do little gymnastics. Themselves. You can flip. You can jump. You can do what you could not do in a traditional form. Is yes. that right? And they still have criteria. You can only do six gymnastic moves or seven. Okay. Um, they, they still have, it, it, is, it's, it still has rules because you don't want to turn it into a gymnastics Right, match. this is a whole different thing. So but, what, um, what makes it karate as opposed to something else? Well, in karate you have, like I said, different styles do different things, different tournaments. We have open forms, we have traditional forms, we have, our fighting is, is different. Um, some styles do not let you punch to the head. Okay. It's a lot of control. Uh, which my, my belt, my first black belt came from Taekwondo. So you couldn't punch to the head. It was, it was mainly kicks and stuff. You punch to the body. Uh, these leagues that we're in now is, allows face contact. Ooh, ouch. Um, they, don't, mm -hmm. um, they don't allow <laughs> she said, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> excessive contact, no blood. Okay. Um, so it's still a sport karate, but it, it gets intense sometimes. Okay. So it's all, all in, <laughs> I was going to say all in good fun, but I guess some days are good. It, it, it is. It's still fun when you get You don't we, mind that at all? <laughs> no, it's, it's fun. <laughs> we won Christian athletes. Is it fun to do it both ways? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she does. Uh, we won Christian athletes award that, that win or lose our students shake hands to the other people. If they forgot equipment, we give them equipment and, you know, and vice versa and stuff. So, okay, so it's a big family. It, yeah. sound, it sounds like, it sounds like, a, is it pretty much value laden to, I'm trying to find the word but the, the values the culture the respect the dignity all seem to be interwoven in everything that I've heard you say and everything that I've seen you do is that fair to say yes so what's next for you Miss Hannah we have a tournament coming up in Texas really looking forward to it because it's supposed to be big the bigger the better most definitely a better competition just makes it a lot funner because you see new people, make new friends. Because you're not friends in the ring, but you're friends out. <laughs> so you can separate the two. And actually, like she said, uh, in the ring they are competing against each other, but after the tournament, they actually go on the side and show each other moves and uh, different techniques. Or give us tips and stuff. Okay, and that's one of the things that you were saying earlier is that Part of it is being able to take instruction and learn from each other, and that's what you all do. So in the last 30 seconds or so, Hannah, Eddie, what do you want people to know about karate and the uh, Eunice Black Belt Academy? Well, I got more than 30 seconds worth, so Miss Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's good. Or, or, yeah, she, is, she, is a, she is a pleasure to teach. Uh, November. We'll be competing in, in Shreveport for the Sport Karate International uh, State Championships, which we won last year. Um, so if y'all around uh, November 1st and 2nd, Shreveport, Louisiana. We can uh, get there. The top sport karate uh, schools in the state will all be competing for the state championship. And then we'll end up our year at the World Championships in Charleston, South Carolina. Sounds great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank We're out of time, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Extra Mile.